Hello, welcome to Swimwear Africa YouTube series. It is the pilot series, and on this series, we bring you experts, artisanals, researchers who are working in various regions across Africa to tell us about this particular group of, um, you know, fauna that help us uh, understand why we need to connect fish, rivers, and people, migratory fish. And on today's episode, we would be looking at the importance of dam removals, uh, why they are necessary to be removed, where they cause obstruction, the importance of these removals to the fish, the migratory species, and the people. Well, my name is Wane Afronelli. I am from Nigeria and I'll be your host on this episode. And joining me shortly is an, ecolo an ecologist from the South African National Parks, who is also a scientist and that works with the freshwater ecosystems and, of course, implements research um, programs. And now what he does is um, these research programs for inland ecosystems of sand parks, which is the South African National Parks, um, he develops projects and makes sense of research and monitoring information and identifies how this is relevant to the freshwater conservation management practice and, um, you know, influence policies. So, yes, joining me on this episode is Mr. Robin Peterson. Thank you for joining in, sir. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for inviting me to your show. It's really I think it's a really cool show that you're hosting, Wani. So, yeah, I'm excited to be on your show. Okay, so could you tell us about the freshwater ecosystems at the Kruger National Park in South Africa um, a, bit, a bit more? Because um, the video, most people may not really understand it, but why was this important to be moving that particular dam in 2016? Okay, thanks, Wani. So, yeah, so. Um, I've been doing a lot of freshwater research in South Africa National Parks, um, in the Kruger National Park, it's sort of just uh, in the northeastern part of the country, and it borders Mozambique, and on the eastern side, and Zimbabwe on the northern side. Um, so the, the freshwater ecosystems in, in Kruger Park, are, <clears throat> for South Africa at least, is quite, is quite uh, unique. And there are a very high biodiversity of fish and aquatic species in our rivers in the park. Um, we have about five major perennial rivers that flows through the park. And um, yeah, so my job for the last 10 years or so is to conduct research and just for the conservation of uh, fish water ecosystems in our national parks. Um, the, <clears throat> the opening video that you saw um, that was a, a dam removal that we did about three years ago um, on the Shingwetsi River, which is a large uh, seasonal river in sort of the northern region of the park. And um, the idea behind it is, is that over the last 10 or maybe 15 years or so, we, the Group National Park changed the sort of water management policy a lot to to look at trying to remove redundant structures in the park. So that dam, the name of the dam was Kanidua Dam. It was an, an old dam that was built a good few decades ago. And the dam has literally become defunct and it's non-functional to what it was that time ago. So it's become a, a redundant structure there. And the idea would be that we are trying to, um, within the catchments in the park particularly, it's trying to recreate or get that river connectivity back again into our systems because these dams create barriers in the river it um, <clears throat> creates barriers for migratory fish to move upstream and sometimes downstream um, it affects the, the hydrology of the of the river quite a lot sediment transport and habitat creations and so on so we are slowly removing all these redundant structures in the rivers trying to get free flowing rivers again, trying to get our connectivity back mm -hmm. again, and trying to get the natural hydrology back in the system again. So yeah, um, oh, it's quite brilliant. exciting. Um, and it's quite- um, it's quite. 10 years is a very long time. 
Um, yes, it has been. And, and within that town, we removed a lot of smaller structures as well. So it's not always these sort of big dams that we're removing. There's a lot of sort of smaller structures that are in the river that are creating barriers. So we could have old urban dams or little causeways that were causing obstructions in the river. So we're removing those as well, trying to get the system as, as free flowing as we can. Um, yeah, so it's something we've been doing for many years and it's something we hope to do going forward in the future is trying to really okay. Um, ensure that our catchments are free flowing, the rivers are connected, because in turn that that sustains biodiversity. You know, if you if you basically take away the migration paths or access to sort of spawning grounds for fish or nursery areas for fish because there's a barrier in the way, um, you know, you're affecting the population of that fish. So we're hoping that um, that by removing these barriers, we will create um, the opportunities and the important habitats that a lot of the biodiversity requires um, sort of in their life cycle, so to say. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I actually mentioned 10 years because I was going to commend your effort. Uh, I mean, what you do for a span of 10 years, it's a pretty long time. Yeah. So many persons would probably get tired after five years, but you're still there. And you also mentioned 10, 15 years. Everyone on your team, cutest to you guys. Uh, but then I'm trying to t read an excerpt from um, a document that I saw earlier. And it feels like I should do a spoken words poetry with it. Within Southern Africa, in the Limpopo and in Komati river basins of Mozambique and South Africa, a large diversity of subtropical fishes occur, which are remnants where the New Zambezi River flows south into the region and out into the Indian Ocean, skeleton 2001. That, yeah. <laughs> Did I do well? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's a lot of work and it spans across, yeah. um, you know, different countries in South Africa yeah. and, uh, you know, having to mention all of these rivers connected together and yeah. that shows a lot of work that you do. Yeah. You yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so why is this, is this important, uh, the freshwater conservation, why is it important? especially for the wildlife in question that are being threatened and the people. And now it's two ways because people think that, um, oh, what, why are you saving the wildlife? We're meant to consume them. They're meant to, you know, give us food for, you know, we have to consume them. We just need to eat. People are hungry and they need to eat. But then could you also highlight the importance of this conservation strategies for the people? Thanks, that's a, that's a good question, Wani, and it's also important, um, you know, so you're not conserving wildlife or aquatic biodiversity or species in isolation. It's not, it's not conserving it for the sake of conserving it, you know, it's conserving it for the people, you know, so it's people as in resource use, people use fish, people eat fish all the time, people use a lot of resources from rivers, not necessarily just fish. There's um, all the weeds, there's plants, there's water. Water is important, you know, mm -hmm. the fish doesn't live on dry land, the fish doesn't have water. Um, but conservation is trying to conserve water quality, water flows. Um, people need that. People depend on water on a daily basis for their, for their lives and for their livelihoods. So when you're looking at conserving rivers, you're not conserving one species or one aspect of the river. You're trying to look at it holistically. So you're going to look at the conservation of rivers and ecosystems is looking at flows, you're looking at water quality, you're looking at the biodiversity, you're looking at the function and structure of the river. Um, that is conserving aquatic ecosystems. And by doing that, you, you create the environment that it can produce resources understand, for people to consume. I think that's really important because okay. um, if there's poor water quality, if there's poor flows, there's no fish, there's no, people don't have access to fish. You know, there's poor water quality, you need to drink the water or use the water for household 
sort of consumption, you can't use it. So the resources, <laughs> you know, so, so it's very important that when we talk about conservation, it's not specifically this and that about it. It's holistic management, holistic conservation of the resource that it will benefit people. Um, what's nice about the Kruger Park where I'm working, it's, it's challenging that it, that the rivers are transboundary. So they originate in South Africa, but they flow through Mozambique and into the Indian Ocean. And in, in Zimbabwe as well, there's certain parts of Zimbabwe, Botswana, and South Africa. If you have to share the resource, and the Swaziland as well, we share the water resource. Um, so that's important. So okay. we need to conserve, manage, um, look at the conservation of these systems um, for different okay. nation states. Um, so that's really challenging, and it's important that we do that. Um, and it's and it's exciting place to work, an exciting intersection to work in uh -huh. beyond boundary uh, river systems. Um, and again, it's you know it's trying to manage these systems for people to use sustainably. Okay, so yes, you could say we need the fish and we need that okay. to consume it, but if you consume it all. Yeah, it's not going to be sustainable. Don't be available <laughs> in the far future or even yeah, the right. future. You know, so, so I think that's what we, uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, that comes with a lot of challenges, definitely. But but that's fun. That's part of that's part of the experience that we okay. that we work through these things. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, apart from this river connectivity, uh, South Africa, Mozambique. Um, to the Indian Ocean, are there rivers in the Kruger National Park? And what are the threats to these rivers? Sorry, I just missed the last part. Can you repeat it, please, Bonnie? Okay, what are the are there rivers in the Kruger Park, for example, apart from those connecting Mozambique from South Africa and you know yeah. all the regions to, into the Indian Ocean? Um, are there other weavers and what are the threats to these weavers? Um, so, so yeah, so I imagine there's a, I mean, there's, there's a lot of rivers in the park um, and they're all the big catchments that are in the park. There's two major catchments, the Limpopo Basin and the Kumati Basin that all again flows into Mozambique and into Mozambique. Um, those are the biggest sort of big systems that we have. Uh, we do definitely have okay. smaller systems, that are the seasonal, ephemeral, and not the big rivers that are flowing everywhere. But these river systems okay. also are very important, you know. So a lot of these systems are nursery areas for fish. They are good, um, uh, how could you put it, they're good spawning grounds for fish, and they, they repopulate the mm -hmm. bigger river systems um, and keep sort of the populations okay. up. They, sort of breed and that's in the, in the off, the smaller systems. And when the big rains come and so on, they all flow into the main stem. And again, that will mm. depopulate the main stems again and keep those populations viable. So these systems are actually very important. And in the park, the park creates a great environment where these areas are protected. So that okay. there's always these, um, these sort of uh, areas where there's not necessarily development can't take place where you could probably put some negative environmental effects on the system. So as Kruger Park in the rivers, we provide a, a really good um, area for conservation, but conservation for populations and sort of viability and sustainability of resources within the national park. So Okay, so in the course of your work, um, what kind of um, barriers do you experience? What causes threats? What do you find in this um, rivers that probably um, cause some form of um, barrier and threats to the fishes in the river, especially migratory fish? So within the river systems, um, so in Southern Africa, um, water is a scarce resource. Um, it's a highly contested resource as well. There's a a lot of stakeholders within the catchment that need water for industry, agriculture, 
there's for domestic use. Um, so it's a it's a very contested resource. There's it's a very scarce resource at the same time. Um, so there's quite a there's a lot of threats to this resource. It's definitely barriers to migration. So there's barriers, and these barriers like big dams and weirs and stuff, they affect the hydrology of the system. Uh, there's pollution, there's pollution everywhere. Um, this part of Africa, it's a big mining, mining uh, sort of province and mining sector is quite big here. So there's big threats of pollution in the system. Um, there's a lot of threats with alien invasive species within the system. Um, it's probably one of the okay. one of our biggest threats is in, introduced species. They sort of uh, outcompete and change indigenous uh, populations, uh, sort of numbers and interactions. Um, so yeah, so there's, there's there's a lot of threats. Um, yeah. Over. So over how do you cope with it? How do you manage these threats? How do you help migratory fish? You know to have easy passage as yeah. it went due, you know, sometimes some uh, move for spawning or just to, you know, you know, grow the growing stage. How do you mitigate all of these threats? How do you help the migratory fish species? Yeah, so I mean, that's a good question. It is, um, it's also something that you're working on. It's a big awareness to a, biggest, to a lot of stakeholders in the catchment. Um, you know, we're not talking in isolation. Everybody's in the catchment, and everybody has to work together to to make sure that the ecosystems and the river stay healthy. Uh, a, a lot of the work is it's with people outside the catchment, the community outside. Um, that includes uh, stakeholders such as agriculture, industry, mining, the normal residents that they have. Everybody has to get involved. Um, a lot of our barriers or dams have what you call fishways on them. Um, so basically fishways are little ladders on the barrier where the fish can climb up or climb down the ladder. If it needs to pass the barrier, okay. the little fishway that could, the fish could go up the ladder to get over the barrier. So many of our, sort ah. of, yeah, so that's interesting. And I'm just imagining fishways. Okay, you, you mentioned the ladder, how? <laughs> I, oh my goodness, I wish we could see a video of such a fish way because okay. I know what a ladder looks like for humans, yeah. but I'm just wondering what a fish way would look like now, you know, going over dams and all the barriers. Okay, so so basically you can imagine there's a, there's a barrier, there's a hole in the river. What you build is you build okay. like a little stairway that comes out from the barrier. Oh. And you build a little stairway that has okay. little steps on it. Right? So you have a couple of steps. Okay. Goes up, up, up. And if the fish, well, as ah. it's migrating and they think you need to get over the wall, they basically enter the okay. ladder, swim way, and they will climb up. So the water is flowing over the ladder and the fish will jump. It will jump okay. from one step to the next step to the next oh. step until it's over on the other side and then book ah. it home. So, so yeah. So, <laughs> so that's how that must be very interesting to watch and see, you know. Yeah. No, that's it's, just um, hearing. Yeah, but it's very exciting when, when the fish are migrating and they're using the fish waste to, to get over uh, these barriers in the river. So we have, we do have that on a lot of our barriers or structures or dams, you know, put mm. it that way. But there are also many barriers that don't have it. Um, so there are okay. some obstructions and so on. Um, again, it's, it's moving forward is trying to convince the authorities and the people that are involved to try and consider building fishways on these barriers just to improve fish and the river connectivity that fish and things can move up and downstream without it being basically a, a barrier or a wall in the way. So yeah, we are working on that. We do try to raise awareness to the various uh, government authorities and uh, construction guys that are building these structures to really consider putting in fishways when, they, when they're building barriers within the system. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so earlier on, you yeah. mentioned, um, you know, you've done this for the past 10 years, removing redundant um, dams that cause barriers on the waterways. And then again, we know that um, recently there has been water shortage um, in South Africa in terms of, um, you know, home use or for industries or for irrigation, for agriculture. So if we go on to remove these dams, would it not affect these are the benefits to the people because of the water shortage? So how can we have the balance? Yeah. So that's yeah, that's a good question. I should probably uh, put some more context into it. So we are removing the dams in the Kruger National Park. Okay, so it's not outside of the park, it's in a park that is fenced off. Um, so these are the structures in the park where we don't have, there's no industry in the park, no agriculture, there's no industry, it's a tourism okay. venture. And there's not necessarily big communities living in the park um, compared to other African countries, okay. there's probably a national park, there's communities within the park. Um, ours is not sort of set up and structured that way. So what we're doing in the park specifically is removing dams and that doesn't affect um, water shortage issues as in supplying that water going to agricultural communities or anything like that. So on our side, that's not sort of, we sort of, we're not positioned where we sort of responsible for that. Um, I think outside of the park, uh, where dam removals are not necessarily the first choice for, um, uh, for, for for river connectivity, migratory fish. Yeah, for migratory okay. fish and river connectivity. Then there we will consider. Please, could you put in a fishway at least, because we know that the dam will be there for supplying water to industry. Um, so the, but but then you mentioned redundancy. So yes, I think if a dam is no longer useful either for agriculture or industry, or then it can be removed because yeah. it forms a major barrier. Exactly. No, exactly that one. So, okay, so you're more concerned with those within the Kruger National Park. Yeah, and those within the Kruger Park and then those that are redundant. So we plan to remove them because there's no use for them anymore. So we <laughs> are removing them. Yeah, so that's, that's something that we're doing for, yeah, like I said, over the last couple of years. And it takes time, you know, it doesn't take one year to remove all the structures. There's a lot of effort, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, so it just takes time, but I think it's just slowly um, working at it. That so do you intend to take on this uh, method, you know, beyond the park, for example, I'm sure on the waterways there are um, dams that are redundant, maybe a particular industry to set it up is no longer using it or a farmer or group of farmers uh, maybe the Ministry of Agriculture is no longer using a particular one. Do you have plans to maybe work with other stakeholders to get this um, redundant dams off beyond the Kruger National Park? Yeah, in the future, that will definitely be our, our goal. And what's nice is that what you're busy with now is a good case study, right? So should we go to um, outside of the park and we need to go to government um, authorities? That you had a case study, you can prove the benefits of it because you've done it. And then as that sort of goes on in the, you know, sort of buy traction into it, you get buying into it. And then if there are redundant structures outside of the park or that are there and people think, what do we do with this? It hasn't been used in 10 years. That at least that option of removing it, it's not as big. You're not quite sure what's going to happen. Should we, should we remove it? We've been doing it for quite a while now, and you can say, listen, please remove it. You are the benefits of removing redundant structures. You can see the hydrology is back, the habitats are back, the fish are back, or there's free movement now. So mm -hmm. it's definitely something that we are hoping to achieve, and we are basically okay. doing a case study now that could definitely show um, sort of the outside of the park that um, it could be very successful and something that they should consider definitely. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so you know, work within the, the Kruger National Park and beyond, maybe in the future. But starting from now, what can people, maybe the community people, do to help um, you achieve all of your goals? Okay, so I think it's it's, it's all about awareness. Um, you know, I think the fish migration and river connectivity is something that just came sort of came into the mainstream, you know, over the last. Okay. Three to five years now, and it's something that we we're hoping to to raise a lot of awareness about it. Okay, so a lot of the time people uh, you would think of a barrier as this concrete structure in the river. Yes, yeah? so it is a barrier, mm -hmm. but there are different barriers. It could just be a very polluted river system. It could just be that people dump the rubble in the river, or people dig this or that, and suddenly that creates a barrier. Because the fish can't get around there now. Mm -hmm. The water's polluted. The fish is not going to go to a polluted an area where the water's polluted. So it That's stops right. them right there. So when we talk about these things to, to people and to communities and to stakeholders, it would be to say, you know what? Uh, the fish need these areas. Fish are moving up and down, healthy river systems, water quality and flow. And I suppose it's again, it's trying to to raise awareness about the holistic sort of conservation and caring for a river system, that it can be used as a resource sustainable into the future where you do have good clean water, you do have um, fish that you could go and use from the resources that you could use. So when you're looking at barriers, it's not always in your mind a dam or a concrete structure across the river. There are many barriers for, for you know, fish and biodiversity in the rivers that, that you can do without a lot of money or just care. And you know, that is sort of going forward, our helping communities could could help us in the future. Yeah. Wow. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Robin. It's been an interesting session with you. And yes, I think I learned um, new stuff, especially the connectivity within African countries, I'm seeing into the Indian Ocean. And yes, um, Swimway Africa is about connecting fish, rivers and people. And you're doing a lot of work uh, with the Kruger National Park, removing redundant dams, of course. And um, we hope that you could extend this beyond the park in the future so that other dams that are no longer useful um, would be removed as well to allow for easy um, fish passage. And of course, I love to see a fish swimway because it's really interesting what you described there, like an undulated movement. <laughs> cool. Now, thanks, thanks Wani, yeah. for, for, for inviting me to your show. It was really nice chatting to you. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I can definitely share a few pictures of you with the fish way. I think just sort of. Um, okay. And um, yeah, thanks so much. Okay. And um, yeah, keep on learning. Thank you. Okay, that was Dr. Robin Peterson. Thank you. Uh, yes.